Hello everyone. Welcome to the episode 27 of Soul Lead Saturday. The guest we have today, Brian Perry. He took his prior education in marketing and finance and currently he is working in commercial real estate as well as he is running his own business in consulting. So let's hear his career journey. How did, fi- how did he find his area of interest and managing to lead that area? So welcome, Brian, and very happy to have you on the show. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Yep. So to start with, actually, when I saw your profile, actually, uh, you have a most diverse profile I came across. So you started your career in the military and then you moved towards a finance firm and then back to like, you know, uh, you did MBA in the marketing and now you are completely in a different area, which is like a commercial real estate and run your own consulting business as well. The first question I would think about is like, you know, what do you enjoy the most and why? What do I enjoy the most now about commercial real estate versus some other things I've done in the past was the the project management aspect of having a lot of different pieces involved in the process Mm -hmm. that I'm personally responsible for. In the past, my experience with the military and finance actually Actually, more more so the military helped me learn how to kind of see things in a way that um, keep things organized because that was kind of your job back then. So I'm kind of reverting back to some things uh, that I learned a long time ago in the military. Mm -hmm. That's great. And uh, when we think about career path, actually, definitely you've gone through a lot of challenges. So what do you think real challenges are when you one has to find out career path? The big challenge for me personally wasn't so much initially after the military. I was about 27. It wasn't about finding where I was going to go because if you're ambitious, you're like, okay, that's what I want to do and you kind of go for it. My problem was that wasn't necessarily the right path initially for me. And I think everybody has multiple paths to get to where they want to be. So for me, being happy Mm -hmm. in what you're doing and seeing that there will be, this is something you can grow in and your potential is unlimited. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way you, I understood it is more or like it is more or important that you are interested and you enjoy what you're doing. So that is more important when anybody has to think about their own career path. So they need to find their interest. So that definitely shows that you look more for the passion kind of thing, like, you know, Mm -hmm. more interest and more passion about the particular field. So what are the latest things happening in the commercial real estate? Well, the commercial real estate is a very big industry. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you were to, with everything in the economy now, Mm -hmm. commercial will always be hit, um, more than residential because office space, jobs, people Mm -hmm. moving in, uh, space. People aren't going to rent space if there are no jobs and that kind of thing. So in commercial real estate right now, in my particular space, is a very good space because you cannot be, uh, you can't really, they have telemedicine, but a dentist or a doctor that does surgery still has to come into an office. So they need that office space. So really, for me, it's there's not that many changes versus versus before. Just the economy is tougher, and and uh, money and saving costs become a really big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now I uh, definitely know that you know you found your interest uh, uh, in the commercial real estate. So, uh, what do you think that extra step or extra mile you took to find your interest and pursue your interest? Well, it was it was a very tough journey post MBA. Was in Boston College about 2016, 2018. Um, the only reason I had found this opportunity was because it was very hard to transition from being in finance to having the kind of job I would want in marketing without all of this prerequisite experience before. So. I was looking at opportunities and because I did serve in the military, 
there are veteran recruiters <laughs> specifically for me. So I would say anybody that has a recruiter specifically that could help them in a way, whatever field you're in, go to them. Don't go to a, a general recruiter. But I found this long list of different people and uh, possible opportunities in consulting. And I was like, I saw commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. And when I saw commercial real estate, that's interesting. I ended up traveling from Jersey down to Maryland, mm -hmm. met the small business, the founders went to their home, mm -hmm. kind of like the area. And I said, okay, I'm going to give this a chance. Mm -hmm. So I got my license. January, I moved down here. That's great, actually. And uh, good to see that you are uh, really doing great. So uh, even though you actually graduated from the good college, like you mm. your MBA from the Boston College, actually, which is kind of a very good college. And still, you had a lot of challenges to find your interest, which is quite mm. interesting, actually, because a lot of people go with the brand of the college. But uh, mm. definitely, it is always a struggle when you have to pursue something that passionates you or you know interests you so mm -hmm. thank you for sharing and moving towards our next question is about you know uh, i am less aware of like what's happening in the commercial real estate or something like that so uh, what are different types of real estates and uh, how does that differ like commercial real estate and regular real estate the one thing that i didn't know prior to going into commercial real estate was how important it is to stay a specialist and to be an expert in a very niche fields because in medical space is, is wedged into the office space market, but the office space market could be, you know, a Walmart, a single tenant, like a McDonald's, uh, an office medical tenant is what you would think a doctor, private practice or a group practice that needs an office. And within, um, medical uh, versus office space, there are certain things that are negotiable that if you're not in that industry or you're not in that sector, you won't know what to negotiate. So our clients trust our expertise mm -hmm. in that market. So, the, the, so there's office, there's medical, there's warehouse where everything's sort of stored. Uh, warehouse is industrial, special, um, you know, um, multifamily. Mm -hmm. So there's all different ones. So whatever you're looking for in commercial in retail, of course, which is the most hit right now, uh, the retail commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. But the, the important thing is that you stick with one of them um, in commercial real estate to be successful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it seems like a lot of efforts as well, actually. So uh, we will dig down actually into that area. So, um, any specific experience that you would like to share, like, you know, how many tenants you have represented or something like that? Well, I can share, I can share with you the typical, mm -hmm. how kind of the process works, maybe working with someone. Mm -hmm. um, and so if somebody, they typically will sign a 10 year lead in my market. Remember I'm talking medical space. This would be per your market mm -hmm. signing a 10 year agreement. So if you're a commercial landlord, it's good. You get a safe tenant. Doctors have a very good credit profile for uh, moving in. So that's why a lot of people like commercial investments. But so the typical client, they might have two years or less on their lease. Mm -hmm. And when you have two years or less on your lease, that's when you would come to, to me, Health Pro Realty, and we would look at, do you need to grow your space? Mm -hmm. Do you want to stay in your space? Do you want to leave your space, go to a whole new office. And within that, you're going to need a contractor, you need a lawyer, you need all these other moving pieces mm -hmm. to get there. Tenant improvements, um, all kinds of different things. So recently, somebody that closed, she's been in practice a long time, but never treated herself to have a real more upscale office. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she finally did it. So this, they moved from an office where the landlord might not have been the nicest person, um, but we can actually save her money and have a whole new office. So she's not actually paying more because a landlord is going to pay money to get a tenant in their building. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, this sounds interesting, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, like when we think about this commercial real estate, actually, 
so what is a typical day look like like you know what is what are your roles and responsibilities in a job role so if you can imagine when you are starting and building your book of business and this is for any entrepreneur any leader you have to make phone calls mm-hmm. and you have to make cold calls and i think that cold calls are probably the most important thing to do but in this day and age with social media i do think going on linkedin Mm-hmm. trying to find them and i found in my market it's kind of hard they're not a lot of doctors and the leaders i want to talk to necessarily active on linkedin but you can actually you know find them find some of them there and you want to make those initial cold calls as warm as you can when you reach out so you're going to wake up you're going to do cold calls about 9 to 12 probably 3 mm-hmm. hours a day more probably f- for me that i should be doing um and then you're going to have a couple of deals that are going on so in the afternoon not peak hours to make phone calls you're probably dealing with admin issues you're getting back to a client answering their questions trying to get the deal over the goal line and keep deals moving and then check on deals that haven't really that are stalled or haven't really um manage to turn into anything yet you have to try to you know push them forward because there's always something going on um and in our business it takes can take 3 to 6 months or longer to close versus residential where you could be closing in a month uh, you know okay. so mm-hmm. so it is like a typical area that you are working for so you more over are working for like a medical commercial real estate that that's area. right correct and uh, as you mentioned actually that is quite interesting to learn to the audience as well like when mm-hmm. they said that you know there are like you have to handle multiple calls actually mm-hmm. so that goes under like you know um scanning the client over the call right so mm-hmm. that is kind of a skill actually to understand the language over the phone mm-hmm. so how did you practice that actually <laughs> to understand your client well that's a good question because i'm always practicing it Uh-huh. because remember you don't want to say things that are you're never going to call someone and have them say oh i'm so glad you called right now to talk to me if it's because you're an interruption when you're calling someone so basically and in 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 my market if we don't do a webinar where we get their direct phone number uh-huh. then i'm calling the their office and in their office they have a a front desk person So I'm not trying to sell the front desk but I am trying to sell the front desk to get me to talk to the doctor so that I can make sure that the doctor is available and I'm trying to set up an appointment. So if you can share in your phone call context because nobody knows nobody cares about my name or my company name initially you have to say okay I'm calling I've helped so and so doctors in the area um buy this property sell their practice here and um i just moved them in down the street mm-hmm. so if you add that context that's what i practice trying to be better at that um and for your listeners when you don't have confidence that's only because you're not you don't know the complete value necessarily you offer yet mm-hmm. so once you at least for me that's how it was once you know that you're offering real value and that no is part of the business you know you'll get you'll be fun Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, and thank you so much for sharing that insight. Moving towards our next question again, actually, is more about uh, your leadership style. So I know mm-hmm. you are leading your area of interest. So, what is your particular leadership style, and any particular leader that you always follow or admire? Uh, right now, I that's well. First, my leadership style is I try to be very positive. Mm-hmm. I try not to get involved in negativity. I sometimes too much social media can can do that. I try to be positive and set an example because I know words don't don't mean all that much. So I try, you know, business results um and trying to um lead by example, I would say. The people that I follow are people in my industry. Mm-hmm. Um and in my industry Rod Massimo, Massimano I think is his name. In commercial real estate, he's the main guy I look at now because he's a coach mm-hmm. for commercial real estate, but again, he's um the only way I'm hesitant with certain other coaches is because unless they know our space, 
I can get coached for marketing and to get more clients, which is what I want. But I also have to look at my company and my leadership Mm -hmm. to make sure I understand what we're doing Mm -hmm. more. So definitely, and I, on Twitter, follow everybody in CRA, the leaders. I go on mastermind phone calls with them. I've got a whole spreadsheet of them I actually have to stay in touch with because I want to be with the in crowd of people in the industry, right? Yep. So it's very, very like a soul self proactive work. I feel uh, the area you are in uh, hmm. always need to be active. And it, uh, it is true. And also, I do have a, a coach, or a, you know, that I work with every week. I feel like that might uh, be came from your background as well. You work serve for military, right? So discipline right. and uh, leadership you might got from there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you learned it and uh, now you are leading the area when you found mm. a career path right it's great to hear from you and moving towards uh, any books or online courses you'd like to recommend to the audience who are looking to get into this uh, marketing and sales yes i would like to recommend two resources the first one is grant cardone has a 30-day membership to his online membership membership site membership site you want to learn about cold calls real estate or anything related to business really it's a huge um it's a huge box of information in there Mm -hmm. so you can go in there and check that out the second one is Don Miller, Don uh, Miller. building story brand story you could if you You learn some of the things from that he takes what he learned with movies and kind of makes that into a script so that you can use and sell your business and what you do easier. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you buy the book, you also get the brand script and you can actually do that with clients and and with any type of consulting marketing business you're working with to find your unique value proposition. And then you can start promoting yourself. It's a really good, um, easy and cheap way buying the book and getting the uh, script along with the book. Thank you for sharing and definitely audience will find it useful as well. And the last question to end this podcast is more or about any tips or advice actually to the people who are pursuing their career in the marketing and sales from your experience, actually uh, what kind of advice or tips you would like to give to the people? For going into marketing and sales and yeah, and the commercial real estate and commercial real estate, I would say after watching whatever you need to do to find what something that motivates you or sometimes something you felt like you know you were wronged in some way. I was watching the Last Dance with Michael Jordan, most famous basketball player ever, mm-hmm. and if you can turn all that negative energy into positive things and what that means is you just have a singular goal and you go after it Mm -hmm. and if you keep doing more things and you load up the funnel with opportunities something is going to come out of it you just have to keep pushing even if you don't know exactly where you're going right now okay that's great and uh very happy to have you on the solid saturday podcast Uh, it was a great quick chat also uh, audience will find it useful. Whoever is looking for actually commercial real estate, please reach mm. out to Brian. He is a great deal maker. So definitely <laughs> him. And uh, hope you will enjoy this episode. And as always, say until we meet. Happy leading. Let's lead together. Stay safe. Bye for now. I thank you.